Oh no! Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Kimby Sport Creations and another weekend project. We've got a really cool one today, very, very simple to do. We're going to make some child's toys. A little setup like these. So we can do a little boat. We're going to make some little figures to go in there as well. A little backdrop that we can make, a little mountain scene. These are great things that, that kids can use and it really builds their imagination. Plain, simple toys. Now we might think that we're making a boat and today it might be, but tomorrow it might be a tank, the day after that it might be a submarine. Who knows? Imaginations run wild. Now then, a few safety points with making child's toys. Big stuff like this, we're okay for choking hazards because it's big and chunky. We do need to make sure though that we're not using pre-treated woods. So we don't want to be using any old spare decking timbers or pressure treated fence posts. We don't want to use any pallet wood because they've got fungicides in them. Those nasty kind of stuff. So we want plain, simple, untreated wood. Scrap ends of pine is absolutely perfect for this. And then we can come through and we can make off these sections uh, and then feed the imagination of the kid that's going to play with them afterwards. OK, right, let's tuck in and see how we do it. So we start with this little piece. All I'm going to do is draw off a bit of a slope on that front, maybe with a bit of a curve to it as well. So you know, I might even want a little bit more than that. Something like that. And chop that off the front and then something similar at the back, maybe slightly less of a slope at the back. So it makes it a bit more obvious which is the front and which is the back. So we can chop those two ends off and then on the top we can angle off the front into a little point. I always struggle with getting one side to match the other. There we go. So something like that and then we can chop those sections off and it's just a simple matter of drilling down with a force and a bit, a couple of holes to get our play people to have something to sit in. Right, let's crack on with that one. So rough cutting that out on the bandsaw gives us a nice shape that way and gives us a nice shape that way but they don't match in. Now whichever way we'd have done this that same thing's going to happen. So what I'm going to do now is use a little rasp to just round off this section here so I can put a little centre line down the middle of there like that okay um, and then I can just round that over from there to there to give us some kind of a point. And then just get rid of this nasty corner that we've got on this point. Files are used quite a lot in, uh, in woodwork, more than you would think. So a lot of people think these files are just for metal stuff. They work fantastically well in woodworking and they get you a really, really shiny finish to it. Now 
and there we are. One nicely smooth rounded off section. Now again, a little bit of sandpaper will finish off that last section. I don't want to go too hard into that point because it'll just disappear and shrink and shrink and shrink. Uh, now, similar kind of thing at the back. I'm going to leave that relatively flat. It's got an angle on it that way around. So I just need to take this little lip that snapped off on the bandsaw so we get rid of that. And then we're almost there. Really making sure that all these sharp corners get rid of all of those. They don't need to be really rounded over. Just nothing that could dig in and create sense. So that's that's quite soft now, just that little bit of filing on the corner. So let's see if we can make these simple characters that the children can play with. You can buy these in packs for relatively cheap, but it's always nice when you can just make it instead, isn't it? So I'm just going to chop off just a section like that, okay? Um, so that's what, about three inches? So just chopping them off like that. And then we need to make a collar section in the middle that will then have shoulders running down and we'll try and round off that head uh, to give it some kind of character all the way around. small chisel and I'm just going to dig in for now just at an angle let's see if we can reposition this not the easiest thing to grab hold of because it's so small but just taking basically a shoulder off to create a shoulder but on pom pom One last bit round the corner I can't get hold of. Doesn't like that bit. Sometimes with a chisel, if it doesn't want to push in, even however sharp it is, you can slice instead so you can just turn the chisel across and it will always slice into the wood really nicely by doing that if you ever find that it's struggling. Usually if it's struggling it means your chisel needs sharpening. So we've gone all the way around, ooh, we've missed a bit there. Uh, basically just to try and get that groove going where the shoulders meet the head. And all you're gonna do then is just continue to work all the way around. We can do the same thing at this top edge for the head as well. And just make that a little bit deeper at a time. Don't go straight in super deep or you'll just end up chopping the head off. And then just kind of slowly work through until you've rounded that off and then you'll literally hold the sandpaper, rub it round, and you'll end up with a nice round head. So now deciding which forstner bit is gonna work best. So it would fit inside that, but with probably too much room, that would work. That would work quite nicely. That's too narrow, okay? So that one, so this is a 22 mil. Again, whatever size doweling you're using, you just want a uh, force a bit that's going to easily allow these to slot in and out. It doesn't want to be a push. It doesn't want to be a tight fit. The kids want to be able to pull these out and chat and have a look. Um, so we're using this bit that gives us a little bit of space. Now, when we've got a good depth like we have here, I might go down quite a way. Again, that just makes it a little bit more stable, even with us having room for pulling it in and out. Right. Back.
I'm only kidding. You you really can have fun with these while you're doing it. So there we go. That one's pretty much done. So a little bit of sanding on here just to take off any little pencil marks, smooth off any edges uh, as much as we can, just to make that really tactile feel. Everything wants to be really smooth and lovely while we're making these. So lots of sanding towards the end uh, just to finish things off. Right, let's make another one. slopes in all directions now right now let's smooth off some corners Once you've made a couple of toys and you can keep going and make as many of those as you want we might want to make a little bit of scenery a bit of backdrop for the play now this could be simple triangles for houses it might be a mountain scene that you want to put in the background again quite often the simpler the easier it is the bigger the imagination can be released um, i've done a few of these before with a few little mountain scenes and i'll show you how to do those and you can make these as simple or as complicated as you want to. So now I can lay these out together, flushed off this bottom edge because that's going to be sat on the floor. And I'm going to draw some mountain type range on the top. So I'm going to do a little bit of that and then bring that back down again. And then I'm actually going to follow that on right the way down there, but we're also going to draw another mountain there, like that, and maybe even a third one like that. Okay, right, so now we're going to get rid of all this top section here. Again, you could easily just cut that off with the saw, round off the top sections over. So here we can just cut off this V section. We can round over that top bit later with a rasp. Okay, and then the next one. This one's a little bit trickier because we've got a few internal grooves. So we need to be a little bit more accurate with the saw in places.
too bad. Now that internal corner there is a little bit rough look. So what we can do with that is I'll go in there with a chisel just to kind of clean off that interior corner. Okay, the rest of these over the tops can just be done with the rasp just to smooth those off and make them look a little bit more mountainy. So this is where I'm just going to add in a simple little bit of detail. So these pencil lines that we put on earlier, I'm going to score down those with the knife and then I can chip in with the chisel just to kind of relief carve very, very simple relief carve through there. So again, I'm holding them nice and flush. I'm going to do it freehand because I don't mind if this is a slightly wavy line because, hey, guess what? Mountains aren't perfectly straight, right? So that can come through just keeping fingers well out the way. So that's one. And then we do the same with that one. Might even actually slope that down a little bit more. Right, so then we just go in with the chisel and make a bit of a feature out of it. So first thing is just to go in and just make that knife cut a little bit more visible. Okay, and then we can go back in again with that. Just make it a little bit deeper. Now here, if you hold the, the knife upright like that, it will wander very easily. If you want to follow a pre-existing line, lower the angle of that knife as it comes down and you're far more likely to follow the line that you've already put in. through and do it again. Okay, and then that little lip there, we can just smooth that off a little bit. Just coming in from slightly further back with a really shallow angle and just take that off little curls there we go and then we can do the same with this one just lovely very simple, but very easy to do. So there we go. A little bit of fun for us in the workshop and hours of fun for kids on the carpet. Absolutely brilliant. I really do appreciate these. Uh, well worth a couple of hours in your workshop to make out some of these. And you can go wild and crazy. You can make as many as you want. Just lots of different shapes that imaginations can choose to create them any way they want. Now again, another little safety point as we finish off, some finishes that you might want to put on are obviously not going to be great because they're going to be going in, in mouths and things. So we need to make sure that all of these finishes are non-toxic. Um, all your general oils are good. So your Danish oils, linseed oil is good. Boiled linseed oil isn't. It's full of toxins. It's not good stuff to use. Waxes are okay. Um, you can use a vegetable oil that is obviously safe. It takes days for it to cure and can actually go off because it doesn't have any preservatives in it. So I would generally keep clear of that as well. The easiest and simplest option is just to leave it blank. Now there's the chance there that things might get a little bit grubby with fingerprints and all kinds of stuff and muck and dirt going on there. Uh, but there's absolutely no risk of any bad things happening and using the wrong finish. That's up to you. Check the labels on whatever finishes you've got. Make sure it's child safe. Click like, subscribe, stick a couple of comments down below. What kind of toys would you like to see made in the future? Maybe something a little bit more complex. And go and sharpen your tools and we'll see you soon.